start anyway because this is already a packed house and if anybody else comes we might have to fire the farm. Call the fire marshal. So uh, this session is out in the open count council transparency. Uh, this is a topic that I am very passionate about as you will see here in a few minutes. So uh, first things first, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Jared Hatfield. Uh, I go to the University of Louisville, uh, Louisville Speed School of Engineering. Uh, so I'm here local. Uh, I am a computer engineering and computer science graduate student. Uh, I got my bachelor's degree last year and I'm finishing my master's degree this semester. So this is actually the last official thing I am doing with my council, uh, this presentation. <laughs> Uh, so positions I've held, I've been a class representative, I was our director of administration, which is a weird <laughs> webmaster, secretary, parliamentarian position. Uh, I've also been vice president. Uh, in our council that means I planned and executed our engineering exposition, uh, which was a ton of work. Uh, and my current position is the old guy. Um, I'm leaving, so I'm kind of the old guy, which makes me qualified for this presentation. So first question is, uh, what is transparency? Well, we need to answer another question first, uh, and that is, why do we even have student government? So let's look at this question first. Uh, first, we have student government to represent the voice of the students to the university. That's really a critical part of student government in general. You want the voice of the students to be heard, and student government provides that voice uh, for the university. Uh, it's also here, we're all here today, uh, our student government provides us specifically with leadership opportunities. Uh, we wouldn't be involved in student council if we didn't value leadership opportunities. Being an engineer isn't so much about calculus and physics as it is about leadership, uh, and leadership is really important. Uh, it also provides us practice operating inside an organization. Unless you decide to move out to the forest in a wood log cabin, you're going to operate inside of organizations. It doesn't matter if you're a consumer consuming products, if you're an employee, or if you're a volunteer for a nonprofit. You're going to be operating in, or in an organization, and a council is just practice at doing that in the real life. Uh, and of course, free food. Student government is a Rube Goldberg machine for free food, so let's all be honest with ourselves. We're being transparent here. Uh, let's make sure we all know that. So, uh, what is transparency? Uh, a definition from Wiktionary. Uh, I'm going to read this. An open public having the property and theories and practices uh, that are publicly visible, thereby reducing the chance of corruption. Now, I don't think there's that much of a chance that your council is terribly corrupt. However, you might appear corrupt, uh, or there might be something. Corruption's bad at any level. Uh, you don't have million dollar budgets that you're allocating to your friends, probably. Uh, another quote, uh, a basic tenet of a healthy democracy is open dialogue and transparency. But let's bring this down to a level that we actually can deal with as uh, students in a student council. Uh, being transparent. Make things public even if you don't think anybody will care. Your tiny little council that only has a few members posting its documents online, who's going to look at theirs? Look at those documents. Nobody cares. It doesn't matter. You still post them online. Your meeting minutes, your budgets, your members list, and even videos of your meetings. I'm recording this lecture today, and it'll be posted online later. Uh, so if you want to show this to your uh, to your constituents, uh, you can get the link from me. Uh, so why run a transparent council? You kind of know what one is now. So why should we even do this? Institutional memory. This is huge. It doesn't matter. The student problems that we're having right now are the same problems students were having 20 years ago. 40 years ago and 60 years ago. Guess what? The packaging changed, but there are the exact same problems. And if your documents are available, if your records are available, if the problems you've been having, you can see five years ago they had this exact same problem. What did they do? If your documents are available year over year, you can go farther, you can travel farther, and you can make bigger improvements. So accountability, uh, where's the money going? Uh, not just so you know how much did we spend on that pizza party that didn't do anything, but also, wait, how much did we spend on that pizza party? I need to know the budget. If those are in somebody's Excel file on their laptop, you can't get access to it. But if it's posted online where anybody can view it, next year's treasurer will be able to find it a lot easier. Uh, and also, did you meet those campaign promises? Not necessarily to hold individuals accountable, but let's hold the organization accountable. Somebody said that they were going to help reduce the student costs for meal plans. Well, did we actually do that? Uh, whatever happened to that? Uh, oftentimes you campaign on one thing and then two months later you forget exactly what you said you were going to do. Uh, an effective government, emulate a greater organization. We're not the federal government, we're not the state government, we're not even local government, but we should emulate something greater than ourselves. And transparency is a great way to emulate organizations that are greater than the organizations that we actually are. So uh, 
what should I actually post online? I'm a computer engineer, so everything here is very internet centric. So everything, good or bad, this is what you want to post online. Everything, it doesn't matter. If there's something bad that happened, if there's, uh, that is the time where you need to be most transparent. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about my personal experiences at U of L about posting the bad. Uh, it can be embarrassing. You might not want to do it. Uh, it's easy to be transparent when everything's good. Uh, being transparent when it's bad is really when it benefits you the most. Uh, so examples from SSSC, Speed School Student Council. So like I said, I was the director of administration, so I dealt with a lot of records. Uh, this is a PHP web application called Budgeter. Uh, it actually lets us post our budget, uh, our yearly budget, with line items, uh, including receipts for the things that we paid online. Uh, you can visit our website, uh, click on Budgeter, and you can see our budget. Uh, it's not always maintained totally up to date, uh, but it's how we keep track of our budget right now. Uh, it has all the information, how much did we spend on eExpo, where did the money for our, our engineering expo go, how much did we spend on our engineer's ball, where did the money go, you can see it. Uh, and keeping it online publicly available, there's no reason not to. Uh, for, this is true for public universities. These records can be freedom of information requested if you wanted to. These records are technically public, at least for public universities. Private universities, it's different. Uh, student council attendance. This is a tool that I'm going to come back to several times. Uh, again, this is a PHP web application. Uh, this actually tracks our members list. Uh, I'll admit when I'm not being transparent, I actually blocked out the email addresses. I'm going to post this online if anybody wants to see it, uh, but you can look up the email addresses anyway. Uh, but this lists all our members and all of their positions. So who's the current vice president? Who are the current representatives? You can go to our website and see this. This is the administrative tool to manage it. Uh, we also give our, give our members achievements. Uh, positive feedback is always good. Uh, if anybody's played Xbox, they know what an achievement is. Uh, but these are just little pictures that go on members' pages. Uh, did you help out with something? Did you serve as a certain member? So you can see uh, the past positions that they've held. Uh, meetings. Uh, meetings themselves and the attendance records for our meetings. These are uh, meetings from this semester. And here's attendance for this specific meeting. Who was present? Who was absent? Who was excused? Uh, who was on... Who was on co-op? So exactly, did we meet quorum? Who was at this meeting? Did this per does this person attend meetings always, or do they normally skip meetings? We have our records online. Now everything I just showed you was actually the back-end management interface. You can't access this on our website. You can access this. This is our public website. You can go to our website and view all of our meetings. You know what? We didn't meet quorum on one of our meetings in January. Uh, not enough people were there, and that's publicly available. Now if you click on one of these meetings, you can actually see who was present, who was absent, who was excused. Things as simple as attendance uh, are things that you can make publicly uh, available. So here's my profile. I served as a first year, second year, and third year rep. Those are kind of look like halo achievements. That's what they're modeled after. And vice president in DOA. If you were to scroll down, I don't have internet in this room. I'm really sad. I would show you the live thing. Uh, but you can see what meetings were, how many meetings was I present? How many meetings was I absent? So if I was running for an office and somebody said, there were two candidates, uh, and somebody says, you know what, I really think this one person misses a lot of meetings uh, with no excuse. Well, we can actually look that up. Uh, we don't have to ask somebody to look it up for us. It's publicly available. Uh, meeting documents. I'm going to appear to be very crazy here. We have our meeting minutes posted all the way back to the 1940s on our website. How did we do that? I watched three seasons of 30 Rock and scanned them in over one of my fall breaks. There was over a thousand pages of documents. These could not be scanned with a form feeder. These were typed. These were very delicate pages that I had to scan one at a time. But I really wanted to watch 30 Rock, so I scanned pages while I watched 30 Rock. But all the way back to the 1940s, you can see uh, when the university changed and all these things. Now they're not complete. We have gaps in our records, but the PDF files dating all the way back to those years are available. Now how do we do this today? We use Google Docs. Uh, we have our Google Doc for our meeting minutes. It's embedded in our website. Uh, hey, did you remember to post the meeting minutes? Oh, I didn't have to. The Google Doc Live updated. Uh, Any time that you can have something happen automatically, uh, that's really good. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, our mailing list is also available on our website. So if you're on our mailing list, you get the emails. But if you're not and you want to see an email, you can go to our website, click on mailing list, and the archives uh, are available right there. How do we actually do that? Uh, Google Groups. We don't run our mailing list through Google Groups. We run it through the university. Uh, that's easier, there's benefits for that. But Google will automatically back up your mailing list. So our messages, we have three years of messages maybe posted on this. You can search them. 
uh, when did we send out the reminder for that event two years ago? When did we do this? Uh, if you can search and actually say, oh, we sent that out one month before the event, and it's already three weeks before the event, we should send that out. Uh, you can look things up like that. Now I'm going to transition. I will admit, our council does not record our, our, our council meetings. Uh, that's something that would be nice to see in the future, but that's not something that we've done. Uh, our university, our student government of U of L, uh, that our council is part of, had lots and lots of drama with our elections this year, specifically our SGA presidential election. Uh, and when things started getting complicated, uh, I came in with my little webcam. Uh, this is very expensive. It's a hundred dollar webcam. Not really expensive. Uh, I went to Best Buy. I bought a webcam. Uh, this mounts on a tripod and I started live streaming the meetings. I started recording the meetings. Uh, and I got really, really negative feedback for doing that the first time. Uh, people were not upset. And then two weeks later everybody loved me for doing it. Uh, so recording the meetings, uh, the, what's the one rule in physics? You can't, uh, being observed actually changes what, uh, what is being observed. Trust me, when somebody knows that they're being recorded and that's going to be on YouTube for the rest of their life, they're going to act a little bit differently and their positions uh, will probably be better for you. Uh, so how do I do this? Let's actually get down, Woo, lights are blinking. Uh, how do I actually do this? What can I do? Um, I mentioned some open source software. Uh, there we go. Budgeter. Uh, budget, uh, budget and organization budget and finance. Uh, there's a short URL, bit.ly slash budgeter. Uh, this is an open source application that I made. It is probably version one. Uh, it uses PHP and a MySQL database. If you wanted to install this and use this on your server, you probably could. It would probably work pretty well. Uh, you wouldn't have that many problems. Uh, and if you do, you can always email me and I'll probably help. Even though I'm graduating, I'm really passionate about open source uh, software. And this is an application that I believe more organizations could benefit from. Student council attendance, again, can you guess what? This is also open source and I made this uh, when I was on co-op and the former director of administration was doing attendance in Excel, that was miserable. I could not stand that. So I spent about two months working on this tool. Uh, basically, the problem we had is members would leave and join in the middle of semesters. And how do you recalculate quorum? And what do you do with those attendance records? And things basically were getting deleted. So this is a PHP application using a MySQL database. This is not a version one application. Uh, if you're a computer programmer in the room or know a computer programmer in the room, please talk to me. I would love to work with other people to make this software available for all student organizations. Uh, I believe there's a lot of potential. Keeping track of members, uh, meeting uh, attendance, achievements, and even committees. I didn't mention committees. It also tracks committees. And something that I would also like it to do is uh, meeting minutes as well. This is a piece of software that you might want to talk to me. Uh, you can email me, very complicated email address, jared at jaredhatfield.com. Uh, that'll be up at the end of the slides if you want to talk to me. These are things that I'm really passionate about and I really feel that student councils across the nation could benefit from more tools like this. Uh, so if you did not get those, I can pull those up at the 